Man, update on racing. We just don't know. Like we're gonna kind of run two different programs of looking at getting in and hoping things get better, but also preparing the European team to handle stuff on their own. And maybe I'll wake up at two in the morning and start fielding phone calls, watching it live like Mystery Science Theater. <laughs> I don't think I can go a whole season without insulting people at the races. Since Jordy hasn't been in the last couple of episodes, I figured this week would be a good time to, to check in with him, talk some tech, and just see what he's been up to. This isn't that bad. Oh man, you're just going for it. I just don't want to touch it. <laughs> Dude, I'd love to give you a hand, but I'm busy filming. Sorry, man. I want to lay it like somewhere really visible so that hopefully it's can people come pick it up? That's way better. Most of the race product comes through this office that's going to top level racers, EWS, downhill, cross country, whatever. And most of the development for what we're gonna run for those riders happens in this office. Basically, we have this model year 21 DHX2 that uh, is with a really, really small rider and it's a very low leverage bike. So for every millimeter of shock stroke, it moves the, the bike a couple millimeters of rear wheel travel, whereas a high leverage bike moves the shock very little compared to rear wheel travel. So. A low leverage bike tends to want less damping, whether it's rebound or compression, because it's pushing the oil faster. Is that making sense? And a high leverage bike gets more travel out of a smaller stroke, but the shock moves very slowly, so it actually needs more damping in the shock. And this, so low leverage and a really light rider, we're gonna pull it apart and revalve it to a lighter tune. I mean, we're always looking for the smallest advantage really when it comes to, to going faster. So like for most people, it's not that big a deal. You're getting 98% of the performance you're gonna get, unless you're really far into the spectrum or your bike's a little weird. This was actually pretty early shock, so it wasn't quite up to what we released. It was pr almost pre-production. So we made some updates and set it up for somebody that's really small. But yeah, that is kind of what we do here is get stuff, take a snapshot of who we have riding, what bikes they're on. And for the most part, we try to release everything in one or two tunes. Like we'll have an enduro and a downhill. Well, I guess it's four, cause then you have an air and a coil also. Like they, they run slightly different uh, damping characteristics inside. But we really don't have like 10 different tunes or we don't do specific tunes for each rider because it's just not necessary. You have quite a bit of adjustment and you can get 99% of the performance out of a product just by setting it up the right way. So, you know, before you start going, oh, I need to, I need to revalve my shock, I need, I need better performance. You need to figure out why and understand why, and you need to set your bike up the proper way by following the steps. But if you're really, really not happy, you can go do the Fox Pro Tune and they can set it up however you want. You see me burning, you see me We're doing some tuning work for OE, which means sales department, right? So this will be basically what the bikes are gonna ship with when a customer buys them. And then we're kind of running through bracketing to be able to give, re well, Kieran is, running through bracketing to give recommendations for a setup chart. So like you buy the bike and you're 150 pounds, you can look on the website, on Santa Cruz website, and go, oh, I should start here and here as like a, a base recommendation for you to then go on and figure out what you should be running. So the 
OE side is really interesting for me because you're really trying to get like the, the best overall setup and not compromise performance too much and not make it too comfortable, but kind of hit that sweet spot. Pretty much the polar opposite of what we do at racing, which is making a bike good for one track to go as fast as possible. On the OE side, you're trying to hit a broader target of like a balance of comfort and performance because most people wouldn't really want to ride a, a pure race bike for a day-to-day -day enjoyment. It's, it just gets a little bit rough. So we still have quite a few weeks left until the first DH race is scheduled to happen in Leo Gang. And obviously we still don't really even know what's gonna happen at that point, but we are gonna keep the videos coming. So as always, feel free to leave a comment with any ideas you have or things you wanna see, and we'll see you next week. Thank you.